You, little bugger. So I've had to come out to b and just to get a long ready bag. That's how I'm going to think about what I say. Well, come on. Anyway, do you like wood? I sort of struggle with knowing where to stop. Big dramatic pause, really. Yeah, good morning. It's Monday morning. Uh, bank holiday Monday. So um, I just gave up. I gave up on bank holidays. Like, I've just been, I think, on the fifth one or fourth. It feels like it's one bin every week. But anyway, so I've come in because it's half term. So I'm going to have Friday off with the kids anyway. Um, yeah, and I just thought, give it a little. Just got to do something. So um, I'll update with what I'm going to do today. Just thought I'd jump on, be a little bit um, political. Uh, Schofield. You live by the sword, you die by the sword, don't you? That's it. If you're going to have people on your show and you're going to be nailing them over stuff and you've been a bit of an obhead, you just got to accept that, really. you just got to... Yeah, just got to accept that and just, you know, move on from it. Do I love getting all the memes with him? All the things he's been doing? I won't say what the memes are. Yes, I love it. I absolutely love it. I think they're hilarious. When I meet someone and they want to defend him, I think, do you know him? No, don't defend him. It's just a bit of fun, isn't it? You know, just taking the mick out of someone that's cocked up. And being a bit disrespectful, people, really, to people that he loves, or supposedly loves, like girlfriends, wives, kids, whatever. I don't know. I think he was married, wasn't he? Um, I don't know a great deal about it, but I'm willing to have a laugh about it because he's put himself up there. Yeah, and that's what I think we need to do. Just, like, bring it back down. This is why I like YouTube. Get everyone off their pedestal, like everyone, strip it all, take all the power back from these TV companies. Anyone can do this, can just go out and talk to people. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, okay. Yeah, all right, I don't quite have the reach of this morning, but I might do one day, you know? Um, but more importantly, I'm not banging some kid. I shouldn't say that, I'm not banging a kid. I'm not, um, I'm not grooming. I don't know if he's grooming, but I'm not having an affair. That's what I'm not doing. Anyway. Um, tell you, packs him. He came out. He's come out this morning, turning around saying he's quitting. We're not waiting for a statement from him, are we? He's going to go gracefully. Some, look, 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 look. You little bugger. Um, yeah, you know, you know when you know. We knew he was wrong. We knew there was something wrong with him. Um, not. I'm not saying that. He's, I'm, when I say something wrong with him, I mean unloyal. That's what I think. I think if you're unloyal, that's the biggest crime. Well, the only crime that I see, just not being loyal, um, not being respectful and, tru and truthful. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying anything else. I've got no issue with... Obviously, I've got issues with bestiality and shit like that. Or paedophilia. I'm not saying he is that, though. That's what I'm trying to say. Actually, quite hard to... How than I thought this was, eh? Next time, I'm going to think about what I say before I come on. Anyway, do you like wood? Shelf pin holes. I'm going to do those. Uh, put the cupboards together. Whack them on there. Put the face frames on. Just like this. I'm not going to film any of that. I'm then going to get these pieces of oak out. There's 15 there, as I've said. <whistles> All on the bench. I'm then going to assess which ones I'm going to use for the sort of countertops and the bottom bit of that, because some of them are... There's quite a few there that are more than big enough to do that, but there's only a, there, there is a handful that will only do the shelves. I'm just going to work out what I think looks the nicest, really. I've, I've already got it in mind because I've labelled them already, but I'll just want now, once I've got them all flattened, I'll have another little look. Then it's going to be a case of the shelves I'm going to reduce a little bit more, but the countertops I'm going to keep a bit thicker. That's why I need to sort it out at that stage. I'm also going to take advantage of the fact that I've never had, unlike Stokefield, a good solid 12 inches. So I've got 12 inches here. I'm going to probably run the boards through the thicknesser. Um, flatten them once and then run them through the thicknesser. Uh, should be a joy to do. Should be quite easy. And then I might knock up a little jig and just give one a trial because we're going to basically put wooden dowels. We're going to put metal sleeves in here. Um, and wooden, I'm going to get those out and show you in a bit, actually. Yeah. Um, right, I'm going to jump on it. These cabinets, they're together. I did a little short of these, actually. I'm going to start messing around with shorts a little bit more. But, yeah, based, just for the sake of putting the LR32 holes in. It's annoying that I didn't remember to do them in that. It's such a schoolboy error from last week's video. But, yeah, um, anyway, obviously, if you wanted to see me put these together, I didn't film any of it, then just look in last week's video. And you'll see it. Uh, okay, so I've since then, as I said, laid all these out on the bench. Uh, some of them you can see here. Uh, they're terrible really but they'll they're going to get cut off or i might just repair the odd little bit because they are on your shelves i've got the three that I, that i recently did reserve l 
middle and right for those units for the bottom for the countertops and that countertop's a bit higher obviously i've still got those they're still as they are i'm going to keep those they, they still to me look like the best match pieces and you know the cleanest and they, they'll look they'll look good for the uh the for the countertops anyway so what I'm going to do now, as I said, is I'm going to run them on that. I'm probably also not going to film that. I basically, it's a bank holiday. I don't want to be here all day. Um, but I just thought I'd show you, because I haven't actually explained properly this system. Or if I have, it was in two, last week, so I might have been the week before when I actually started making it. But basically, I've used the LR32 system, um, but I've missed every three holes, so we've gone to a 96 mil in the end. Uh, I only had a 6 mil route of it. <clears throat> I couldn't get a seven and a half mil route of it. And I brought these, and the reason I wanted a seven and a half mil route of it is because I bought these things from um, Hayfield. Half Lil, Half Lil, Half L, um, however you say it. But basically, they're like little brass insets that basically are going to go in those holes. And then I'm going to bang a timber dowel in there. And that's going to be my shelf peg. So I've done a little mock-up one here. Now, I think that looks really, really nice. But it's a bit bulkier than I sort of imagined. <coughs> I mean, yeah, it's a little bit bulkier than I sort of imagined. Um, yeah, so really, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to resize all this timber now uh, on the thickness of planer, on there. I'm just not going to film it. I've done so much of that. Um, I'm then going to make a jig so that basically I am going to scoop out Got my pencil on me. I'm going to, if this was square cut, I'm going to do a little scoop on the bottom of each shelf, like that, basically. It'll make sense in a bit. And that will sort of house, it'll be slightly oversized, and that'll house that. So that when you, yeah, so when you drop the shelves in, they've got no way of being pulled out, you know, if you've got a load of jars on there and for whatever reason someone grabs the, sh they take a jar out and it pulls another jar, which has got something grippy on the bottom and it jags, uh, drags the shelf out, it'd be a bit of a disaster because the shelves are heavy enough alone, let alone with glass and stuff on there and kids and stuff about. So yeah, I'm going to do that. I also think it will look a lot nicer as well because when the shelf is on, you won't actually see these pet. We well, you I will make it so you see a little bit of them because I've put quite a bit of thought and effort into it really. So um yeah i just didn't want to do a typical system on it i just thought because it's open shelving i thought i'll just do something a little bit different i'm hoping it's going to look really sort of quite special when it's done and not not get lost in the detail really um as an also an absolute result and winner as well i've managed to open this bag without just knifing it i just actually just used a little seal when i opened it so i'm really happy about that little things you know normally i just rip them open Right, okay, so I'll pick you up in a little bit when I start making the jig. I might do a little time lapse of the jig, actually. Okay, um, I am done for the day. Uh, off right, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I've done that, I showed you that. Um, 
showed you, I think, what I was planning for those. Um, yeah, these are the shelves and the countertops, which I'll fit in some plain now. You can see how flat they're sitting to each other. You know, that's turned out an absolute dream. They're the countertops. Squared everything off. They just need sort of horning in to around that arrangement. Um, and then I've just made this little jig, which, you know, if anyone does any of this sort of work, you know that really the jig is the work. So basically, I've given it quite a bit of slack, and that is intentional, just left and right. Uh, but no slack that way, because I figure that will stop the peg ever wanting to come out. Not that it will, once it's banged, once it's sort of placed into that insert. But I thought if I give it a bit of slack that way, when you put the shelf in, you will sort of, as you slide that shelf in and drop it down, you don't want it to be too precise because you, you might not know if you've connected. At least if it's there's plenty of slack, it will always seat and connect. You know, like always, I've cut a sacrificial piece of MDF just for the shelf, just so my first pass wasn't in the oak, just to be, you know, you just want that. To, and then actually, luckily I did because I did it and I was like, do you know what? That's too deep. That looks shocking because I was just going to give loads of slack that way. So when I've, done, when I've done it again, I just gave it a little bit less, you know, it looks nicer. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy with that, although it's not the most productive day, to some, I guess, I don't know. The Prime Minister is promising to close a loophole. Boris, bloody Johnson. Right, anyway, so, Tuesday morning. Hello, how are you? Matt here. <laughs> right, yeah, so did these yesterday. Um, spin you around here. What I'm gonna do now, is I'm just going to, just for anyone that's, that cares, I think I've mentioned this before, but I use this UJK uh, guide bush set for the Festival router. And you can basically just have all these adaptable, all these different size guide bushes through one collet on a threaded bit. Um, the only thing I will say is, it doesn't come with a mandrel to centre it. Although this should and is always centred to the plate, there's a tiny bit of tweaking within there. However, not a big deal um, for, what I'm, for what I use it for anyway. Anyway, so I'm going to write down the sizes that I'm using and I'm going to put that away. I won't disassemble it because this is essentially now a hospital job. I'll keep the jig. So I'll write the sizes on the jig and I'll throw the jig down there with just a load of other jigs I make up. Sometimes never ever get used again. Sometimes they do. Sometimes I forgot I've made them and I make another one, so there's duplicates in there, because I'm just like that. Um, so here we've got the other shelves. Again, they're just gonna get benched. They're gonna go down there. That is what we call a hospital job. It'll just get picked up as and when, because I've got to do an in-store on Thursday, and it's Tuesday. Um, and so I'm gonna take these MDF doors now that I made, just these two. These, right way around. Those, and you can see I've just got a sand and flat. I've used a bit of rag to wipe off the glue. They, they feel a bit further up actually in places. That one's, there's a bit of a lip there. You know, you get, like I say, they're within half a mil. I'm gonna knock them flat, take the tongues off, put the router on the edge, give it a spray coat of primer. Same for the frames, got another door to do. And then while that's going off, I'll probably, and the shelves, while that's going off, I'll, um, I think we'll get on doing these middle divides. And then I'll, yeah, see, I might do a little video of that.
What have I done? What's been going on? What have you been doing, Matt? Well, obviously, been in the spray room. Um, all that's prepped now for uh, Thursday install. I have then, obviously, I've just had to jump on the cupboards um, because they also need finishing. I hadn't cut the shelf. And as I explained, I hadn't done the shelf pin holes. So I'll just show you how I did the shelf pin holes, actually, because um, it might be of, of interest to some people. I mean, you probably figure it out, really. Okay, so shelf pin-wise, all I've done... I've got a board that I actually, I, I did, I cheated. I did the LR32 system for this just to get these holes uh, in the right place. But you could, there's no reason why you couldn't just measure and mark X amount of holes and just get, like any jig, just get that bob on. <laughs> then what I do is I then cut it back 40 mil from the edge because that's how I want my shelf pins to be, 40 mil. And then I cut from the bottom up, make that square. So you can sit it inside the cupboard. Now I just put arrows on both sides, so you only put it one way. Another little trick is to cut that side at an angle so you never stack it the wrong way. And then you basically offer it into the cupboard. You know, I'll pencil them out where I stop and start, and you drill through there. And then when you want to do this side, you just flip it over, offer it up to the front of the cupboard, same thing. That side, same thing. And then what I do for depth, you know, there's nothing new to most people, I wouldn't have thought. But basically, for depth, just have my drill with a 5mm drill bit. And I drill for a piece of wood at 5mm. Um, and then that piece of wood, you know, as long as it's, as long as it's over length, say in this case it was like 60mm, I'll then slide it onto the drill. Make sure your drill bit is all the way in. Make sure it can't go any further in. And then I'll measure the thickness of my template board, which was nine mil, and the depth I want to go in with the shelf pin holes, which was 10 mil. So we've got 19 mil there, and I'll cut that back. So that every time you drill in, every time you're drilling in there, yeah, it stops it. Try and do this without well, moving, basically, it will stop it so you won't go too deep. And as you can see, you get a neat, you get a really neat finish with that. A little bit there, look. Yeah, as you can see, you get a pretty neat finish with that. Um, the only thing I will say is you almost really want to have a jig for every job. You don't want to, you know, it's not like I'll throw that now. I actually, do you know what? I found one as well. There was one in there after I made that, which is a bit irritating. That are moisture resistant. So what you really want to do is make it out of either moisture resistant or something just a bit tougher and then just lob it at the end of the job. Now, believe it or not, I've actually built um, five, five kitchens, five handmade kitchens and one utility with that system. Um, never, had a, never had a wobbling shelf. Uh, and it isn't even that much slower and the advantage is you can do it when the cupboards are done and the advantage of that is so say like these ones I did these ones before the cupboards were done and I've possibly done the whole I've probably done too many holes when you do them like that you can visualise a lot better exactly where you want your holes for your shelves because I don't, I don't see the need you know I'm not doing a it's not an automated system where I've got holes everywhere or set measurements. I just depends on each cupboard. So there's a couple of cupboards there where they, they don't need it. So I'm not putting them in. Whereas if they were a Howden's kitchen or something, they'd automatically come off the machine with the right amount of holes in or stuff. And it just looks a bit shit inside the cupboard. I just like mine to be individual, tailored to the environment. Bespoke. Right. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do now, actually. I've got a few little jobs to do. Um... What can I do now? Just a big dramatic pause, really. Just dramatic pause for effect. And then I rebate, I finally did these pieces of oak as well. So these are just dominoed on, um, just loosely fitted for now. So what will happen is on site, obviously this will all be sprayed and finished, and there'll be a shelf covering that. Um, on site, this will get leveled to the floor and then once it's levelled, I'll measure and scribe this little fillet in to cover the levelling legs. Um, and then, as long as I remember, and then I'll put these face frames back on. I've just got to remember to put the bloody 
scribing piece on first. Because if I put the face frames on first, I won't get the scribing piece in because the face frames overhang two mil. But we'll see what'll happen there, won't we? <coughs> I think I know. I think I both think we both know. Both I think all of the hundred and sixty nine of us know. <coughs> that I'll forget. But anyway, um I've done the shelf for here as well. Now this shelf I, I've just glued and clamped that on there. I've got a little edge bander, but I've sort of done this before in another video, so I'll put it up there. Um, I'll, often I'll do solid wood lipping, especially for shelves or drawers, because it just takes a bit more abuse than the edge banding. Um, but in this case, I'm just utilizing wastage. It looks a lot better and it gives it more rigidity. So it is literally PVA'd on. I use a roller to roll the PVA on the MDF edge. And then this is then just a bead of PVA on the back of that and it's just tightened up with the clamps. Let that squeeze out, sort of sort of go off for about 25, 30 minutes and scrape it off with a chisel. Sand it off tomorrow or put a flush trim router on it or whatever you want to do tomorrow. Just leave it a little bit proud. It really doesn't matter. It does, it does, a, does a great job of it. Well, good morning. Uh, Wednesday morning. Uh, I'm not going to do a lot of filming today. Um, just not basically but yeah just thought I'd pick you up I've, I've done the shelf you know I was talking about sanding it back and oiling it and that well, I've actually put lacquer on it but basically yeah I've just done a little rebate there that's just for the shelf pin holes um because I've got that middle transom if you like um anyway uh just thought I'd come and check on it make sure everything's all okay um forgot as well I hadn't sprayed the back of the frame so I've just sprayed that up as, as well quickly just so when you look inside the cupboard you don't it's, it's only primed anyway yeah, and just check on the finish of these, pretty good. Again, it's only a primer, but yeah, because sometimes I'll put the preparation tape on the edge of the MDF, but the MDF I'm using is pretty decent for quality, so I necessarily need it. But yeah, they look pretty good. I'd need to denib them anyway, but I think just for a prime finish. I did. You got, see, this is where I struggle. If you're supplying anything primed, I sort of struggle with knowing where to stop. Whereas if I was fully decorating it, you know, it's got to be perfect. When you're priming it, you kind of like, you know, how far, how good's good. Um, paint has got to take control at some point. The, the, not what my goal is. My goal is always this: for the paint to come in and go, but yeah, well, that's good. That's really impressive. Just impress them, you know. Wow them. Um, yeah, right, and so what I'm going to do today is the draw runners. I'm going to get all the draw runners done. Not, I'm just going to basically get them all cut and milled out, and then I'm going to pick you up. Right then, welcome to Matt's workbench. Um, okay, so we've got the veneer drawers. Um, this is how I make my veneer drawers. It's not how I make all my drawers, it's just how I make the veneer versions. So we've got 19 mil uh, MDF oak veneer crown cut. And we've got 10 mil um, MDF crown cut oak veneer again. Um, and basically, each piece has been rebated all of the way around on the spindle moulder, and that would accept this 10 mil panel. I actually rebate it at 10.5 just to give myself a little bit of wriggle room when you start going around the corners, and to you know, so you can get the glue in basically. Also, you've got three five mil dominoes there, um, and then the corresponding slightly looser mortises for the dominoes going around the corner with the two um, pocket holes, which you've seen multiple times. Um, the reason I make them like this, uh, it's purely cost. I've done dovetail drawers, I've got the jig below the bench, but you know, for certain applications, um, and just to bring this one in on budget, we've gone for, and they've got a lot of drawers, it's veneer drawers. Um, and what I do, do is these aren't loose panels when I make these. These are actually glued in panels because it's the same material. Subject to the thickness, it's the same material. So if this is all stable, it's all glued and clamped together, it will all move as one. Just here on this blum drawer, there is a rebate of 14 mil. And I've rebated this out to 14 mil. Um, that means that this piece here, which is quite wide, it's about 30 mil wide, will spend its whole time sitting on the bottom of the drawer. 
So it's actually, the drawer is being supported from the underneath. They're being carried from the underneath. So there's no hanging weight. So they're actually a very strong drawer. A, a, a ridiculously strong drawer. Right, okay, so we'll do a bit of real time gluing, real world gluing, let's see how this goes. So I always do my tight dominoes in the uprights. Just because it's easier to bang them in when they're when they're facing you. If you do them in the end pieces, then you've got to bang them in on the end. Spread a bit of glue around. Hello Matt, it's Keith at Eco Timber Panels. Okay. Um, our driver's just wrong. Um, he's going to be with you just after five, about five past five. Oh, lovely. Thanks for letting me know. Anyway, just in case of those that are concerned, that's my PM delivery coming in just after five o'clock, so I am going to be here late. But anyway. Right, so I will put a bead of glue on the top face, but only a top, a smaller bead if you like. Okay, there we are, seat's in there. Now, there's no squeeze out there. And if you look on the back, there'll be a little bit of squeeze out on the back. Um, right, so this is where it's quite fragile, just momentarily. Momentarily! You dust out. Again. Bead along the back, tight bead across the front. And then, bit of dot, bit of glue in the holes. Glue finger. going to happen now is you are going to see some primo squeeze out on your side because that's where you want the squeeze out watch this I might be, I might be going to join you I just, I just know it's happening how that yeah that's where you want it you got to put enough in to know if you put enough in is for it to squeeze out. Just glue your finger. Right, this is what I mean. These pocket holes, just keep dropping them. You've got to load them in like that because you can still screw them at the wrong angle like that. They won't come out the front, but it's just, yeah, they don't follow the pre drill holes very well. And then it fits perfectly in there, which keeps the glue at that end of the bowl, a bit like leaving your ketchup and putting down on the fridge. Right, that's why they make the lid like that, you see? That's why the ketchup lid is shaped like it's like. You can leave it upside down. All they need to do now is change the right one. Shout out Heinz. We'll wipe that in a minute, there we go. There's your drawer. Look, that should be this way. And you can see so little squeeze out. There is a tiny bit there. You know, that's why I sand it on a bloody thumbprint on it. But that's why we sand it all beforehand because now I've just got minimal work. It'll still get a sand out. And I'll show you how we three fourth, how we um, square it now. Go corner to corner, nine, six, two. Oh my word. That is bob on. Let me just double check that actually. If you ever want to check it, you get a bit of timber and you just pencil mark it so you're not looking at the measurements. And then you can, because sometimes your eye is drawn to the nearest measurement that, it, that you want it to be. That is spot on. Uh, which is a shame because I can't highlight how you fix it. But I'm going to. These lamps are they're rubbish. Now, the one thing they're good for, they've got soft ends. They're not very strong, you see. So if that was out, I'd just go corner to corner on whatever corner I want to adjust. Um, so if you want to make it, it would be making this one smaller over here. You'd pull it and it would start twisting that round. As I've said before, we'll lip this with solid timber. So I didn't get a chance to run out today. I'm going to grab a bit. Yeah, here's some. I've got a load over there that I just need to run down, but basically we'll fit this in plain and load of bits of timber up like that. They'll get PVA clamped or taped to the edge and then we'll flush trim rattle right them off. Very similar to what I did on the shelf. I am. Um, just took you down from the, um, the professional 
the, the, the rig I've got going on here. Um, obviously I've got my scaffolding up just so I can get up there, attach it to me, boom, I'm on wheels. I mean, that's, that's the sort of professionalism you're looking at there. Anyway, more, more shit chat. Right, um, I just knocked the glue off. Knocked the glue off and it's done. Because I'll let it all complete. Like, so you don't get any squeeze out on these ends. You only get the squeeze out on the front or the back. And you don't see the back ever. Although I will sand it back and lip it. And the front will look like that when it's done, won't it? And then the side will look like that. Obviously, we'll be missing this because I'll be a higher up. Um, yeah. So that'll be your drawer, a nice big drawer when they open it up. Very nice. Yeah, so um, I'm going to jump on them. I know how long they take because I've just done um, just done one, filmed it. Done this one as well, which is like a slightly different drawer, solid oak uh, front on that. Did that one just today. Uh, that'll go in there above the bin. I've uh, got a delivery coming, so I'm going to basically work right up until the deliveries come in. Okay, good morning. It's Thursday morning. This is my last day this week because um, I'm going to take the kids away tomorrow just to the seaside or something. Although the weather's not looking great. Anyway, um, yeah, so I'm on this install. I don't anticipate this taking all day, but the second I've said that, I mean, it really isn't that much work, but everything does want scribing in and whatnot. I haven't asked if I can film yet. I'm going to go meet. I'm, I'm here early. I'm just parked around the corner. I'm going to go around and uh, ask her in a minute. two lengths of timber they're on the job they're on the job when I was there the other day and I priced it and I said oh yeah I won't take them with me I don't need them but I didn't mean don't throw them and she threw them so I've had to come out to B&Q just to get in the wrong bloody way just to get um, two lengths of this timber yeah all for so I'm not going to be a half day job now are we because that's a, that's a 25 minute journey right well, a little bit of context for you uh, why I had to get those battens up so basically I've made these two shelves here, one here, one there, and uh, they're to mimic some shelves that are on the um, other side of the room. And basically, the person that has done it before, as I said last week, has already somebody been here. They've, they've rebated the MDF out. They'd actually done their rebate in the middle. I've off centre of mine, so there's a bit more strength left. Yeah, and then the, the, that timber then sits in that rebate. Um, yeah. So. 
I'm going to do that now, but this timber oh, I thought was going to be left here, but it wasn't, you know, for whatever reason, so. Am I a fan of it? Not really, because if, if the opening is slightly out of square, you're not going to be able to slide it in, which it is, it's massively out in the wrong way. Um, it's basically bigger at the back, so there's no way I can occupy that space at the back because it's tighter at the front. So I don't really like doing it like this, but I'm just matching what's there, so that's what I was asked to do. Um, it'll be all right, I'll, I'll get loads of glue in that in there, so I'm going to um, yeah, do that and then I'll finish with really. Right, and that's it. Um, spin you around, obviously you've seen, seen it going, that's what I'm matching. Um, and these have uh, they've been done the same way. Right, these are, so these are my ones in. You know, not nice finish on those. Just needs corking in. It's purely because the walls are out and I've got to slide it in. There's nothing I can do about that. If, if I was, if I was able to drop them in, it'd be different because they have to slide in over those battens. It just is what it is, really. Um, but yeah, the actual unit looks nice. It is only prime, don't forget. It's not finished painted. That's the inside. Um, shelf's adjustable. Probably just needs a bit of cable management there as well. Um, I've cut that socket into the side, used some longer screws. Um, yeah. And just a bit of corking in. Bit of a pain when you've got a situation like this. Because to scribe that skirting board in, you need to have it in position. You can't have it in position because you've got to notch out that bit of floor and you, you can't do both at the same time. You need to do one, then scribe the other in. But when you do that one, you can't get it closed because you haven't scribed that one in. So it wouldn't be a problem if that scribe might be doing over there, but it's just, I've had that happen to me a couple of times over the years, where like even on a worktop where it's just two points that need scribing and you can't get it into each space. You, know, you do one first, basically. If that makes sense, I don't know if it does, but yeah. Took a lot longer than I thought, but I always had to nip out to the old B&Q. But yeah, it looks all right. Yeah, looks nice. Right, okay. Uh, I didn't actually sign off then. Um, yeah, so basically, um, that job really, really should have been half a day. But what's happened in, in that instance is, or when I went round there, because I had, I had to go and visit because she'd already had the job started. The person who'd started it had bought this 25mm MDF and rebated it, as I've shown you today, and bought these battens. So I said, well, I don't keep the 25mm MDF. And to keep the cost down, she wanted me to reuse what he'd got. So I went to go pick up this half a sheet that was left or three quarters of a sheet and brought it back here. Um, I didn't, it's cheap quality MDF. So I didn't make the doors and the frames and any of my work out of it, but I did make the shelves and actually the countertop out of it because she likes the 25 mil profile. Um, now, what he's done is he started it. She's, he's done some other things there and I had a little close look and to be fair, they're not very, he doesn't really know what he's doing. Um, so she's got rid of him kept the materials i've taken that away when i took that away i didn't want to take the battens away because there's no need um so i just said oh i don't need those but i meant i don't need to take them because i was taking the mdf she was like oh you're gonna take the battens i was like no i don't need those and she thought i meant i don't want them throw them away and i just I, and i knew as well when i when i drove away from there i thought oh, do i text her and say oh by the way put those battens to one side because i will want them when i come back Anyway, I turned up and I, I, you, I, you know when you know, I almost straight away saw they weren't where they were last time on the dining room floor and went, still got those buttons? She was like, no, I threw them away. I was like, 
But um, it's my fault. I, I appreciate that a lot of what I do is very similar. So once I get installed in this kitchen, that will be a decent video, I think. And actually that customer's contacted me. They want me to make a table. And I've just been to go look at a job, um, which is something different for me. I've just been to go look at a job, which is some vanity stuff. There's, there's another bathroom. I've got a bathroom up the road and I've got another one, which is yeah, just down the road, actually. No one pointing. But um, yeah, and that one, possibly having a pull-out bath panel as well. So, you know, a bit more interest there. That'll be a good one rather than just all the same old, same old. Um, or maybe I should just put a bit more attention to telling you what I'm doing with these cupboards and stuff. I don't know. Or maybe it's just not that interesting, who knows. But if you're here now, you know, I'm hoping this video is going to be short as well. If you're here now, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Um, yeah. See you next week.